Good evening, I'm Mike Bradner, and uh, we have with us uh, today Lisa Parody, who is the school administrators, he head of the school administrators, uh, an organization that represents superintendents and, and principals and so on. Lisa, tell us uh, about your organization. First, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, I am the executive director of the Alaska Council of School Administrators, and we're uh, the umbrella organization for um, the Alaska Superintendents Association, the Alaska Secondary Schools principals, the Alaska Elementary School principals, um, the LASBO organization, our school business officials, and we represent essentially all school administrators. So if you think about a school district, we're the voice of school districts without teachers. Does that make I sense? See, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, that's a little different perspective than, let's say, you have other organizations like teachers' organizations, mm -hmm. you have school board organizations, so that creates some, so much some balance. In, Absolutely. In, I think it's a nice balance for Alaska to have those, those um, complementary yet uh, different views. Uh, you know, what do you see? What are the big problems that you face from the perspective of people who actually are in the classroom? Well, I think um, for us today, uh, from the administrative perspective, we're struggling to staff our classrooms. Uh, we are always focused on preparing and attracting and retaining quality educators. And um, that's because our students deserve nothing less, right? And so for us, um, when we're against a backdrop of a national shortage, an educator shortage, um, and, and Alaska historically has recruited from uh, the lower 48, and now those um, teachers and principals and superintendents can you know, become employed in, in, in good jobs right in their backyard, they're less folks choosing to come to Alaska. So our pools have, um, have uh, become much smaller and um, all you have to do is talk to any longtime serving educator who used to go to the, the placement fairs down in Anchorage and there used to be standing lines you know, out the door and now we're lucky if we can get a couple hundred people and often um, uh, some of those folks are just rotating from district to district. So. Uh, a big challenge for us is, is um, retention of our quality educators, which uh, we're very lucky to have quality educators in Alaska, and continuing to work on ways in which to, to keep them, and as well as recruitment for our open positions. And just by one example, I know um, we were talking earlier, our special education teachers were really struggling in Alaska to fill um, special education positions. So I think we're interested in um, doing what we can to look at creative solutions, work with the Department of Education and Early Development on ways in which to continue to ensure quality, yet make sure that we're able to um, staff our classrooms. And it's easy to say, train our local teachers, mm -hmm. but that's not easy. I mean, teaching almost is a five-year program, and, and that's mm -hmm. costly and, yeah. and difficult. It so. is. And, you know, one of the things that um, our organization also administers is the Alaska Staff Development Network, and we are the largest provider of professional learning outside of school districts in the state. And through our efforts, um, one thing I've learned is that um, educators, uh, once they go through a pre-service, which is, like you say, a four to five year uh, proposition, they're interested in quality professional learning and continue to grow as professionals and 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 do the best they can to serve our students. Um, we certainly uh, go to great lengths to work with districts in the state to provide that kind of professional learning. But one of the things that we're running into, um, of course, is with our uh, funding streams um, the last couple of years is uh, kind of running into where we, we aren't able to offer our contracts to um, to our uh, staff in a timely way because we don't know what our budget is until the, you know, and I think last year it was in June. And we have a, a requirement, of course, to have our tenure contracts by May and our non-tenure contracts by the last day of school. So you really have put school districts in a difficult position when you don't know what your actual funding is. And we have unusual teaching environments. I mean, you go yes. from small cities that are isolated to villages to very conventional environments in Fairbanks and Anchorage. 
a broad spectrum, right, from sure. the little tiny schools um, out in Bush, Alaska. I heard uh, someone say one of our, our communities had 10, you know, 10, we're still at that number, and then to an Anchorage, which is a top 100 school district in the nation. So we are serving every school district and trying to provide a quality education to every student, which is our highest priority, right? So. Um, our staffing is, is pretty critical to that, and so is our funding. I'm really pleased that this year um, both bodies have introduced legislation to um, provide uh, timely and reliable um, education funding, and so we'll be really supporting those efforts to, to get those bills through so that the folks I represent can issue their contracts. And that's going to be a tough, tough job to accomplish. There's always the debate whether you can maximize your opportunity you know, in a early funding that you might have had in a final budget closure. I mean, Absolutely, yeah, so. those are always difficult, I think, discussions, um, but important ones. And I have confidence in this legislature, certainly in the governor's leadership, um, that education is the highest priority, or certainly one of the highest priorities, a key to our future in terms of our workforce. And it is appropriate to invest, invest early, give stability to school districts. Um, really, what, what more important should we be doing? Lisa, believe it or not, we're out of time already, all too short. Always a uh, pleasure. Yeah, this Thank is you. Capital Views, and I'm Mike Bradner, and we've been with Lisa Parody, who uh, runs the Administrators Association. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much, Mike.